Here are some important reminders to help ensure that you and your family are safe. Wash your hands thoroughly and regularly with antibacterial soap for at least 20 seconds. When soap and water are not readily available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Please try to avoid crowded places and make sure you are at least one to two meters away from others. Never leave the house without your face mask and face shield. Make sure your face mask covers your nose down to your mouth. Get vaccinated. Register with your local government unit. Remember that the best vaccine is what's available to you right now. Make the most out of the online services that are available today. If you must leave your home, please sanitize your belongings and bathe immediately upon return. Remember, WOW 2.0. Wash your hands. Observe social distancing. Wear your face mask and face shield. Get your two shots. Please attend our online services and meetings. Our safety is of utmost importance so that when we physically gather again together as a church, no one will be missing. Be safe. Thank you. and welcome to Without Walls. My name is Kara, and if you are joining us for the first time today, we'd like to say welcome. And if you wanna to get to know more about us and what we stand for as a church, I'd like to invite you to check out our website that will be flashed on screen. So throughout the week, we gather in small groups called Life Groups. So this is an avenue for you to just journey with other people to talk about life, and really to dive into God's word and to see what he has to say. And so if you are interested in joining a group like this, please email community at withoutwalls.ph and we will surely get you connected. Now we just recently started something new called WOW Wednesdays. So this is a group that meets every Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. And this is just another event for you to start your spiritual journey. You know, to, to not only know how to cope throughout life, but as well as how to thrive with it. And so if you're interested also in joining a community like this, join us every Wednesday. Thank you. 
For the battle 
Verses 12 to 13. We work wearily with our own hands to earn our living. We bless those who curse us. We are patient with those who abuse us. We appeal gently when evil things are said about us. Yet, we are treated like the world's garbage, like everybody's trash, right up to the present moment. Let us pray. Father God, we come to your presence 
to give you our highest praise and our thanksgiving. Father, our present lives have never been easy. We are tossed with trials and difficulties. Yet, Father, as you always do, you have never forsaken us. Through your never-ending grace, we are saved. Father, we lift up all to you the works of our hands. Bless us and as we may continue to bless others. Father, shield us from the pain of this world. In your strength, we will win this battle. This we pray in thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, Amen. Amen. Good morning, Without Walls. Uh, thank you again for um, allowing me to be able to preach to you this Sunday. I'm excited about the word that was just read, especially because it's a, it's a word that I have to keep uh, reading, reminding myself about, um, and having to live it out. Um, and it's, it's, not, uh, it's not easy. Um, but it's something that we have to do as believers, as Christians. Uh, well, before I start, I, I, you know that, uh, maybe some of you know that Pastor Luigi is going for some medical tests, and I, I'd like to just start this off by praying for him. So let's pray. Father, I, uh, Lord, we just stand here asking, Lord, that you continue to heal and continue to mend uh, the body of our pastor, Lord. Continue to bring his health back 100%. Continue to just bless him, Lord, and bless the doctors that are uh, taking care of him, Lord. Lord, we are excited for the miracles that you are going to do uh, for our pastor, Lord. Lord, uh, we thank you that you will... Um, just reveal things in our hearts that need to be changed as we read your word. And Father, uh, the, thank you for um, the grace um, that uh, you give us, Lord, as we listen to your word. Thank you that we will not walk away from this message uh, the same, Lord God. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So good morning, without walls. Um, the the reading was from First Corinthians chapter four, verse twelve to thirteen, and uh, it's it's a it's a hard um, verse, really. Uh, um, not easy to to live out. Um, let me let me just um, read it to you again uh, from uh, the writings of Paul. We work wearily with our own hands to earn our living. We bless those who, who curse us. Well, that's hard. And we are patient with those who abuse us. That's, that's even harder. And we appeal gently when evil things are said about us. So, uh, that's difficult to do. Yet we are treated like the world's garbage, like everybody's trash right up to the, the present moment. Um, you know, I, I, this uh, makes me remember a poem that uh, Robert Frost wrote. And it's a, it's a famous poem. And the title was uh, The Road Not Taken. But uh, in the last maybe five uh, verses of his poem he mentioned uh, let, let me read it he said I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence two roads uh, diverged in a wood and I I took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference the road less traveled by um, I am sure that as we, we come across the verses in the Bible, we find ourselves asking if the road we have made the decision to travel on is the right road. Or perhaps we come to realize that we've been traveling on the wrong road and it's time to check the compass and 
find out if if we've gone a few degrees in the wrong direction and it's time to backtrack or check our bearings in first corinthians chapter 4 verse 12 to 13 well those verses uh, they're the ones that that make you start thinking am i on the right road is it time to backtrack um the verses well they guide and they intervene it reminds us that we have no life outside of god and, and these verses make us realize that there is more to us than, than simply responding to what is naturally human paul writes that we when we are criticized or scorned or given a tongue lashing or cursed then we are to bless when we are maltreated or oppressed we are to endure we are to be patient a teaching similar to that of our lord jesus in the sermon on the mount in matthew 5 jesus tells us that if if anyone slaps us on the right cheek then we turn and give the other cheek jesus tells us that it is our duty our calling our obligation in the matter of personal offense to offer our other cheek in verse 43 and 44 of chapter 5 jesus says that we are to uh, let, let me read this to you you have heard the law that says love your neighbor and hate your enemy but i say love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you i must say that these words of jesus have asked me to review the roads i have decided to travel along as a christian and really this road about loving your enemy and praying for those who who uh press and harass you or harass me uh, is many times a road i prefer not to take I am not saying that um, I haven't been on the other side where I have been unkind to say the least to others. I am sure I have placed others in a position where they have had to pray for me because at one time I had been the oppressor. Jesus gives us the reason in verses 45 to 47 for doing so why we must be this way in verse 45 he says in that way you will be acting as true children of your father in heaven for he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike if you love only those who love you what reward is there for that even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. Now, why is the decision to take this less traveled road so difficult, so tough and backbreaking, demanding? Because it is the fallen nature of man to respond in kind. Our fallen nature, the way that we are, goads us and drives us to be good and kind to those who are good and kind to us. Isn't that so? And to be nasty and hateful to those who are harsh and insensitive to us. But what Jesus is, is telling us that, you know, the human nature um, falling prey to that is the wrong road to take. When someone is inconsiderate to us and, and treats us badly, we are to be kind to them. And when we pray for those that are unkind to us, we are showing the world that we belong to our Heavenly Father and that He is at work in us by His Holy Spirit. When we are treated wrongly by someone and we show Him kindness, in return, we are reflecting the constant day-to-day -day kindness that, that God shows to those 
who do not know him and who rebel against him. Now, there is nothing extraordinary or noteworthy about behaving in the manner that the world expects us to behave. A stone for a stone, a tooth for a tooth, an eye for an eye, as we always say. But when we move in this way, you know, um, or when we do not move in this way, when someone wounds us and we do not wound in return, or curse us and we don't curse in return, but bless them instead, and then, then we go beyond the natural impulse of the human heart to take the road less traveled that Jesus is asking us to explore. And this will only happen in a heart that has been transformed by the Holy Spirit. It will require self-denial. It will require self-sacrifice. It can only be brought about by the movement of God's Spirit upon the soul. When we take this extraordinary road, this load, this road that's less traveled, we discover the more important issues that are very critical. How do we live out our Christian lives? How do we show the world the grace of God shown to us in the gospel? This less traveled road requires us as believers to accept the one who has offended us as someone also created in the image of God, a soul precious in God's sight and in need of the same grace that was so generously been poured onto our lives. If someone offends us, we should set our hearts on reconciliation with that person. If we reciprocate with an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and a wound for a wound or a hurt for a hurt, a coarse word for a coarse word, a gossip for a gossip, a sharp answer for a sharp answer, then no harmony or reconciliation can happen, thus bringing dishonor to Christ. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, from the New Living Translation, it says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love and joy and peace and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. There is no law against these things. If we are filled with the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit is present in our lives, then we can't be snared into returning hate for hate. The journey into the road less traveled becomes more beautiful and we find we are more than what we are simply feeling and doing. We will find ourselves in a larger world filled with God's love and redemption and mercy and grace and prayer and holiness. When we pursue revenge, then we travel into a, we travel into a smaller world where you forget that there is no life outside of God and you can't see God's faithful ways of working in and through your life. Jesus requires more from his followers than just avoiding to pay hurt for hurt. Jesus wants us to bless when we are cursed. We are asked to grow and, and, and plant seeds of kindness and and patience and love and reconciliation. We are to show that we are different from the world. If we bless when we are cursed, we show that we are true sons of the Father who is in heaven and who is constantly changing us day after day after day. Now, how do we honor Christ when we are the recipient of an offense? In Romans chapter 12, verse 14 and 17, Paul writes, Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. The words of Paul mirror what the Lord Jesus teaches us in Luke chapter 6, verse 28. Jesus says, Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. 
So there it is again. There it is again. We are asked to take this road less traveled. This road that many times I prefer not to go into. This road that, that goes against the grain of what our fallen nature is inclined to do when offended or hurt. Impossible to do perhaps. But God has granted His Spirit to those who believe so that we might have the power to do what is required of us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 4, it says, He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us, who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. When we are under the influence of the Holy Spirit, we begin to see how our lives are interlaced with God, and we remember who we are. We are God's children. We slowly discover in this road that's traveled what, what God is doing and who we are before God. We discover that it isn't about how strong and tough we are, but it's where we learn of God's strength and how faithful God is. Instead of us focusing on who has offended us and how we have been offended, the road often traveled. We learn to focus on the truth of how God has responded to our rebellion, our sin, our disrespect for Him. But He has always responded, responded with nothing but kindness. Had God responded to us in kind, in, in the same way that we have treated Him, I don't know where we would be today. Yet in all that we have done, He has in His kindness allowed the rain and sunshine to fall on us all. In Titus chapter 3, verse 3 to 5, it says, Once we too were foolish and disobedient. We were misled and became slaves to, to many lusts and, and pleasures. Our lives were full of envy and evil, and we hated each other. But, when God, our Savior, revealed His kindness and love, He saved us. Not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. Mercy and mercy alone. When we as Christians receive unfair and harsh treatment from others, how we act in response can either dishonor God or bring glory to Him. When we resist to exchange hurt for hurt, unkindness for unkindness, we recover the identity that God has given to us. We become a reflection of God's glory. When instead of cursing, we jump into prayer for the person cursing us, then holiness is displayed in our lives. And the road less traveled leads to more opportunity to see God's work in our lives. Let me end by sharing a story with you on David. Well, while David was hiding from King Saul, he and his men found good work to do in the wilderness. He returned, he formed his men, and together what they decided to do was to protect travelers and shepherds who were vulnerable to outlaws, because there were many at that time. Now, one testimony by one shepherd about David during this season is found in 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 16. He said that David and his men were like a wall of protection day and night for them while the shepherds were busy taking care of the sheep. The presence of, of David and his men put, put some law and order in, the, in this crime-ridden area. And, and one of those that benefited from David's protection were the herdsmen of a wealthy sheep owner named Nabal. There was a big celebration going on because it was the end of the sheep shearing season. And when, when David heard about the celebration, he sent his men to request for some food. And David had been protecting them all year. And it was sensible. It wasn't a, a, a crazy request. It was a sensible request for all the for all the things that David had done 
for, for Nabal's properties and the servants of Nabal. But Nabal, instead of sharing the celebration feast and the food with David and his men, acted like he had never heard of David before and of the protection that David had given his property and his men. Nabal not only refused to give David and his men food, but insulted David as well. In 1 Samuel 25, verse 10, Nabal says, Who is this fellow David? Nabal sneered to the young man, to the young men, the men of David. Who does this son of Jesse think he is? There are lots of serious, uh, lots of servants these days who run away from their, their masters. So this was a, clearly an insult. David was furious, and in response, David said this in 1 Samuel chapter uh, 25, verse 22. He says, May God strike me and kill me if even one man of his household is still alive tomorrow morning. So David had placed Nabal on his death list and promised that Nabal and all the men in Nabal's family would be dead by tomorrow morning. At the latest, David was well on his way to becoming another King Saul who resorted to, to killing anyone who was a threat to, the, to his position as king. But then Abigail, the wife of the fool Nabal, got wind of the intentions of David and the stupidity of her husband and, and brings food to David and his men to make amends for the foolishness of Nabal. She goes on her knees and begs David to spare her husband. And then she reminds David of who he is, the prince of Israel. She reminded him of God's anointing on his life, that he would be king someday, that he was the giant killer, that he had killed Goliath, you know, with just one stone from, from a sling, that his job was to fight the battles for the Lord and not allow the vulgar and, and foolish Nabal to dictate the design by which God had destined David to be and to live out. She reminded David that he had no life outside of God and that David's life was formed by the tender mercies that God had shown David and not the foolish actions of a fool named Nabal. Abigail reminds David that his task was to leave the revenge part to God and that David was not God, that David was in the wilderness to discover who he was before God. Surprisingly, David listens to the kneeling Abigail and decides, as we had mentioned earlier, to take the less traveled road, the road that we take, when we read and hear the words of Paul that echo what Jesus spoke. Let me read it again. We work wearily with our own hands to earn our living. We bless those who curse us. We are patient with those who abuse us. We appeal gently when evil things are said about us. Yet we are treated like the world's garbage, like everybody's trash right up to the present moment. David, David listens to Abigail and he thinks, he starts to think about his actions, about uh, murdering the whole line of Nabal. He moved from being vengeance obsessed to, to taking the road that would honor his God. There are plenty of Nabals in this world and we've met them and we have become Nabals ourselves. In some instances, every once in a while, um, they come into our lives and lure us to travel the road that our sinful human nature would naturally take. And what saves us are the words like those of Paul and of Jesus, our Lord, who said, Bless those who curse you. Praise, pray for those who hurt you. It is so common in the spiritual life to start out right and end up on the road 
so often traveled, but the wrong one. We begin with excitement in, in our Christian journey and much passion and so ready to listen and to serve Jesus. But somewhere along the journey, we are perverted by the temptation to get even when we are hurt by others. No matter what's, what one's work is or where one is working or serving, whether it's in a private company or a political party or a government office or in a school or in a church or in a charitable organization or in one's home or in one's family. No, not one believer is exempt from being offended. We have all met a neighbor in our journey towards the less traveled road. When someone offends us or hurts us or insults us, our self-importance emerges and we feel violated and we become, we become hung up on getting back at the, that person who hurt us. We want revenge. We have an overwhelming need to get even. We become preoccupied with revenge and before we know it, we are off course from the road that is less struggled. And then, and then by God's mercy, we are put back on track by the words that Jesus said, by a beautiful sunrise, by a song, by a stranger, or a fellow Christian, by someone like Abigail, a church member, a wife, a husband, a pastor, a life group member. Sometimes when we are wrapped up in our own self-importance, we forget about God. And then we hear the words of Jesus. We hear it again, to give the other cheek, to bless and to Pray for those who hurt us. And we wake up again in the less traveled road that is full of God's love and redemption. Full of prayer and grace and mercy. And we forget about, about those, those trivial, inconsequential thoughts of revenge and having to get even. And we find ourselves on our knees again, back into a life that brings honor to our God. I hope we will take the time to read those verses again. And every time we are tempted to, to take the road that is often traveled to, to get revenge, to return hate for hate. And then when we read those words, we those words, allow it, uh, let's allow it to bring us back to the less traveled road, the right road, where we find, or we can find God again, and where, where He can speak into our hearts and remind us uh, to, 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 to forgive and to pray for someone or for people who have hurt us. And in so doing, we bring honor to him again. The God who loves us, the God of all creation. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord God, that every time, Lord, we are provoked to go the wrong way, Lord, because of your grace, Lord, we, we begin to read your word again and we remember who we are and uh, who you want us to, to be in this life and how we can bring honor to you. We thank you, Lord, that you will give us the strength to, to choose the road that is less traveled. It may be the harder road, but it is, it is the road where you are. Father, continue to shape us according to your tender mercies, Lord God. Continue to remind us that it isn't about our strength, that it's always going to be about you, about your faithfulness, and about your kindness. 
Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, church. Uh, don't leave. There's going to be the next link for the commune. So we'll see you there. And um, we'll, sh we'll share uh, bread and wine together. So see you later. God bless you all. Have a great morning. Thank you, Pastor, for that wonderful message. Communion will begin shortly via Zoom. Now, for your tithes and offerings, kindly scan the QR code flashed on screen to give. But if you've already given, we'd just like to say thank you so much. Through your generosity, we're able to do what we continue to do um, for you guys and, and to do online services. And so, really, your generosity goes a long way. So, thank you. Now to get the latest updates on Without Walls, kindly uh, join our Viber community or you can follow our social media pages. So I'd like to just say have a great Sunday. See you for Wow Wednesday happening every Wednesday via Zoom at 7 p.m. Have a great day. Nothing can stand against the power